Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Monday, October 21st, 2024. It is 6.05 a.m. This morning we're in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. And the title of the Breakfast Biscuit is, What Controls You? It's a good question to ask. Good question to answer. <clears throat> Maybe a good question to provoke some life change. So, off we go. Weather this morning. Oh, and by the way, if you would, help me understand this. This is uh, <clears throat> 30, 40 people maybe watch this thing live, and then the rest of them, sometimes as many, seven and 8,000, uh, watch it later, and they have perhaps no use for the weather forecast. thought it was a little service I'd offer, so give me some feedback. If you want to drop that, we'll drop that. If you want to keep it, we'll keep it, so uh, let me know. Anyway, <clears throat> this morning, weather. 53 beautiful degrees outside on the way to 82 with no appreciable chance of rain and winds light and variable. Just doesn't get much better than that. And this coming Sunday, I'm, I'm pastor, for those of you that don't know, pastor of a church called SeaTex Church. We're a fairly new church, two and a half years old. We meet in the Holiday Inn Grand Ballroom on Walden Road in Beaumont, Texas at 10 a.m. each Sunday. And I'm doing a series right now called Conversations with Jesus. And next Sunday is Conversations with Jesus Nicodemus, and it contains the most famous Bible verse in the Bible, and I think it's pretty important that we understand the context, so join me for that. Now, <clears throat> back to what controls you. In this passage that we have for this morning, Peter is addressing a problem in the New Testament church. He's also addressing a problem in your church and the churches of 2024. The problem is false teachers. Teachers who commit adultery, these are according to the scripture in the preceding verses, these are teachers who uh, uh, commit adultery with their eyes, teachers who live corrupt lives. They love to indulge in evil pleasures in broad daylight. They are a disgrace and a stain among you. They delight in deception even as they eat with you in fellowship meals. <clears throat> they are charlatans that are in it for the money and the pleasures of the flesh. And they are willing and currently engaged in manipulation and abuse of the church. Here's what Peter had to say about them. Our focal verse for this morning, verse 19, they promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. One more time, for you are a slave to whatever controls you. If you are in Christ, you are no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. If you are in Christ, you are not corrupt. If you are in Christ, you are free from sin, not under bondage to it. I've known lots of cases of addiction and being out of control. It's always heartbreaking. It destroys teeth and nerves and health and wellness, lives, marriages, families, fortunes, and eternal destinies. These false teachers promise freedom, and they promise freedom from God. They themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. And you are indeed a slave to whatever controls you. So what controls you? The next drink? The next bet? The next secret? The next instance of sexual gratification? The next financial windfall? People knowing your name? It boils down to being this simple. The flesh and the spirit, are the, they're diametrically opposed and you're under control of one or the other. That's how humans are built. Listen to what it sounds like to be under the control of the flesh. This is from uh, Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. <clears throat> Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. On the contrary, the spirit life, beginning in verse 2, is described as follows. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
There is no law against these things. Praise the Lord. That's the life I want to live. And it's a life you can live if you're not already living it by the grace of God and Jesus Christ. And it's there for the asking. Let me close out with this from the famous book of Romans. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Let me pray for us. Father, let our lives be under control of the Holy Spirit and not under control of the sinful desires of the flesh. And let it bring you glory and blessing to your people. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.